In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please be seated. Almost 13 years ago to the day, St. Anne's took a huge risk. I would say one of the biggest risks in its 111-year history up to that point. At the time, things here were tough. I remember hearing stories about how the wardens, the treasurer, the secretary would stand each month with the bills in their hands trying to decide which ones St. Anne's could afford to pay that month. But meanwhile, at the exact same time, unbeknownst to this church, a very young priest, just three years out of seminary, was working as a college chaplain keeping late hours in Statesboro, Georgia. He and his young wife had started a family, and though they loved the people they were with, they knew deep down it was time for a change. Afraid of change, however, that young priest often thought, but where could I possibly go? I'm too young to be a rector. Who would be stupid enough to hire me? (laughs) But then one night, on a whim, or maybe more by a nudge of the Holy Spirit, that young priest picked up the phone and called the parents of his old high school friend, Alice. Jeannie Rigdon, Alice's mother, answered the phone and said, Hello? You know how you do when you answer the phone. The guy on the other end said, Hey, Jeannie, this is Lonnie Lacey. Well, Lonnie Lacey, how are you? Um, I'm fine. I hope you and Steve are too. Hey, Didn't I hear a while back that y'all are still looking for a priest at St. Anne's? And then Jeannie Rigdon got real quiet. And then Jeannie Rigdon, in her quintessential Jeannie way, said, Well, now this is an interesting conversation to be having. In time, more interesting conversations were had. People were met. Prayers were said. And lo and behold, in the summer of 2009, You guys called as your new rector, this guy. (laughs) Now, I have a couple things to say about this. Number one, I just want to be really clear that in 2009, these glasses were really cool. (laughs) The other thing I will say is that this is uh, the absolute definition. If you look it up on Wikipedia, you will find these two images put together under the phrase, rode hard and put up wet. (laughs) I found a picture of myself at this church when I was 16 years old a few weeks ago, and I looked at that picture, 16, 29, 13 years difference. You couldn't tell any difference. You can tell a difference now. (laughs) Hey, Nellie, are you looking for mom? Yeah, she's right back there. You see her back there? Wave again, mom. You see her, Nellie? Okay. Um... So, yeah, y'all called that guy, and I say it was a risk because on paper it made absolutely no sense. On paper, an inexperienced, teenage-looking priest whose only job so far had been to hang out with college students and to play guitar with middle schoolers and high schoolers really had no business being given the keys to one of the diocese of Georgia's most treasured, storied, beloved parishes. For the record... I thought y'all were crazy, but I needed a job, so I kept my mouth shut. I will never forget the night, a few months after I had arrived and was, you know, here and doing my thing, when Roy Rankin and I drove over to Albany for the installation of St. Patrick's new rector, and as we were driving back from that event, Roy said, did you know that rector is only 32 years old? That's too young. And I said, Roy, I'm 29, and he said, well, that's different. (laughs) I say it was a risk, and in some ways, in the way that all good things are always a risk, it was. But we know that it was more than that, don't we? Looking back, we know that even as y'all were wondering and worrying and looking and discerning and praying, I, at the same time, was wondering, worrying, looking, discerning, and praying. But far more importantly, at the same time, 
the Holy Spirit was moving, preparing, teaching, forming, readying, connecting, and calling. I say it was a risk, but really, it was just the Holy Spirit. Y'all, we did not do any of this. All we did was say yes when the Holy Spirit finally showed us the way. In today's Gospel, Jesus is preparing His disciples for the fact that He too will soon leave them. Can you imagine what that would have been like? It's one thing to lose a rector you sort of like, but it's a whole other thing to lose Jesus. And he had come back from the dead, and everything, everything was now so full of hope. Everything was brand new, and it all felt so right. Life was good, and the disciples probably thought that it was going to stay exactly that way forever. But even with Jesus, there are endings and new beginnings. It is always the way of things. So pay attention then to the promise that he makes to his disciples. He says, I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said. So for us who love the Lord Jesus, y'all, there is never a departure, never a loss, never a change or transition where the Holy Spirit is not already on the scene, moving, preparing, teaching, forming, readying, connecting, and calling. As I have said to you many times before, either we believe this stuff or we don't. So yes, after 13 wonderful years, I'm leaving St. Anne's. It is not easy but it is time. In recent months, the Holy Spirit has shown me one mysterious thing after another, small things and big things, loose ends that have finally been tied up, and big dreams that we had had for a long time that finally came true, all as if to say, look, they are strong. They are going to be okay. It is time. And I could give you all kinds of examples about what those moments have been like. I'll give you two. There's one small one, which is, well, I'll start with the big one. The big one was last week. Last Sunday was something else. And I don't know how y'all felt, and I actually had a hard time figuring out how I felt afterwards, knowing what I knew I was going to do to you two days later. And I thought, was I happy? Well, sort of. Was I sad? Well, yes. Was it bittersweet? Well, absolutely. Was it kind of fun? Well, yeah. Stan, I hope you still have that check and that it's going to be up there forever. But what I realized later this week is that what last Sunday was, was holy. It was a confirmation that the Spirit of God lives in this place. And in that moment, I knew it's okay. They're going to be okay. It's time. The other confirmation, one of the small ones, is that a couple weeks ago I was working late in my office past sundown, which is hard to do at this time of year, so I was here really late. And all of a sudden I looked out my window and something seemed sort of strange. And so I went out that little side exterior door I have, and I looked, and all the ground there in front of the ministry center was illuminated. There are new lights that have been placed up on the ministry center. Y'all, I have been trying to get those lights up there for like the last five years so that when the time changes and the kids are out there playing in the middle of the winter, it's safe for them to do so. And God bless every junior warden has, who has done a piece to get us there and to get us there and to get us there. But I thought it was never going to actually happen. And all of a sudden, Kathy Moreno finally found the electrician to do it. And there are lights. I know that sounds so stupid. But there I stood in the light of the Lamb of God. Just like it says in the book of Revelation today, they will need no more sun or moon, for the Lamb will be their light. And I thought, okay. I hear you. I hear you. Lots of little things and lots of big things have let me know 
that it is going to be okay, and that it's time. And y'all, that's the funny, beautiful thing about call. The Holy Spirit never, ever, ever, ever calls one person to something new at the expense of somebody else. If this call is genuine and true, and it is, if God has wonderful things in store for the Lacy's and for the people whom we will serve next, and he does, then God has wonderful things in store for you too. As an old friend of mine likes to say, you ain't about to be no fatherless child. In the meantime, it still hurts and it's still hard. So today, if you are mad, be mad. If you are sad, be sad. But don't be mad or sad forever. And if you are one of the ones who's just downright happy about all of this, well, God bless you. I'm glad I finally found a way to make you happy. (laughs) We are blessed with a month ahead of us, a month of much love and many blessings. A lot of tears, maybe, but also, I hope, some really good goodbyes. So let's make the absolute most of it. And in the meantime, as we look our way toward Pentecost, hold on to the Holy Spirit and never, ever, ever forget that the Spirit is already on the scene, moving, preparing, teaching, forming, readying, connecting, and calling. Jesus promised He would be, so you know It has to be true. Amen.